Welcome back to uh, uh, these videos in pathology. We're going to talk about uh, proliferative capacities of tissues today, or in this video. And let's just, um, I don't know if I've ever explained this specifically, but there's cells, and a bunch of cells equals tissues, and then a tissues make up organs. So if you have example um, liver, you know, there's certain tissues that make up this liver and there's certain cells that make up the tissues. So this is kind of like going from really small, a small view like an individual cell and then kind of working it up to more a gross um, gross appearance or a bigger collection of cells, if you will. So when I talk about the proliferative capacity of tissues, I'm talking about the proliferative capacity of these certain, certain cell types. There might be one cell uh, population that makes up a certain tissue, or there might be like three or four cell types that make up a certain tissue and then there might be certain number like three or four or five or whatever number of tissues that make up an organ. So when I talk about the proliferative capacity of tissues, I'm talking about how do these tissues, can these tissues divide and what kind of proliferative capacity or dividing capacity um, do they have. And we're talking about this in the contents or in the context of um, repair and healing. Repair and healing. So if uh, a tissue gets damaged, can it repair itself? You know, and there's three main categories. These three three main categories, all tissues within the body can kind of fall in between these three main categories. And the first category is continuously dividing cells or tissues. An example of that is uh, your skin, uh, stomach lining, stomach lining, um, your, your ducts, any ducts that drain fluid or anything like that. Um, you know, if you have some, uh, you know, you have two kidneys, and these kidneys, uh, dr you know, have ureters that will drain your urine, and it will fall into your uh, bladder, and then your bladder has a urethra that will exit the body. These ducts here. So this is your bladder, these are your kidneys, these are your ureters, and this is your urethra. Um, you gotta make it more look like a kidney, I guess. But these, these kidneys, these ducts, are an example of continuously dividing tissues. They divide very quickly, uh, they can divide pretty quickly and they have an unlimited amount of dividing capacity if the stem cell pool is maintained and is intact. Then these can divide and divide and divide whatever, what, how much they need. Um, so this is the big if the stem cell, if the stem cell pool is maintained. And in the last video we talked about how stem cells create a pool of, of cells and that's a, this is an, a great example of that. The next type of tissue are kind of stable tissues and they have limited, limited capacity. And they're usually camping out in the G sub O category. And remember in the cell in the la previous video we talked about the cell cycle and how there's a G sub O category, which means is that they don't really divide unless they absolutely need to. And an example of this are, are kind of the organs, the main organs. 
beside besides heart and brain. Like an example would be the kidneys, uh, the bladder. These are kind of more stable, um, uh, you know, stable tissues, and they're usually in the G sub O category in the cell cycle, and they do not divide um, readily. You know, if there's some kind of uh, ischemia or whatever, or necrosis that happens on the kidney, uh, it might not go back to normal. Uh, it might regenerate some, but it's not nearly as good as dividing like uh, these these uh, these tissues up here, the skin, the stomach lining, ducts. Um, and then the last um, type is permanent tissues. I kind of give you a hint here, but the permanent tissues are heart, brain, and most most muscles. So if you have a heart that gets damaged from, like, say, a heart attack, that heart, what's going to happen is you're going to undergo fibrosis and complete scar scarring. Um, so if you get necrosis and part of your heart, you know, let's just say this is your heart here, and part of this heart dies, the scar is going to be formed here. This, this, there's going to be a scar formation. It's going to be fibroblasts come in here, lay down all this connective tissue to kind of rebuild your architecture, but you're going to lose function in this part. This, these cells here, these myocytes, are these, you know, these cardio, these cardio cells, they are not going to regenerate in here. Also with the brain. You know, your brain has a limited capacity. Uh, I'll put brain and nerves. You know, they don't they don't regenerate. There is some evidence to show that you know there might be some exceptions after a heart attack that some cells might be able to regenerate, but for the most part, they don't. Same with the brain, the nerves. If you sever a nerve, very unlikely that it's going to grow back. It might, but slim to none chance. Um, and you know, just, just food for thought. If you are involved in any activities that cause a lot of brain damage, <laughs> yeah, might, might want to find another activity to preserve some of your brain cells. Um, and your muscles, uh, muscle cells, muscle cells are very, have a very limited capacity to, to grow and they're considered permanent tissues considered permanent tissues and they do not proliferate they don't they can't um, regrow like these these examples here okay so now let's talk about some stem cells talk more about stem cells so as we've talked about before you know let's say there's a population of these stem cells here they are converted to kind of a pool of uh, of cells. They kind of differentiate a little bit down to these pools of cells, and then they can, uh, you know, they can change into these cells, or they can change into these cells, and you know that that can go on. And in the case of Let's just say this is your gut lumen or you know that your gut track and your food is passing food is passing here, passing here. Well there's little cells here that make up your your track. And in the case these cells divide very rapidly, or not rapidly, but they can proliferate quickly if you know if you eat something that kind of takes off this layer, you know, takes off this layer and then you kind of flush it out, if you will, well then there's another layer of cells below this that will come up and replace these cells. They'll replace it. This kind of is a process that happens in the skin too. Or any any lumen uh, uh, in in 
any kind of lumen, this can be this example or concept can be applied. But then down here, these are stem cells. These are stem cells. And they differentiate as they kind of move up towards the cell line. So this cell line will replace this kind of group. This type of cell will replace this cell as this as these cells die or you know as these cells get injured, you know, these cells will die and they'll you know need to be replaced and these cells will kind of move up. And you know these cells, let's just say these cells are the intermediate here, well then the, these cells will move up. And then these cells will move up. And then these cells will move up. So it's kind of this process it almost reminds me of, you know, back in, you know, the wars of the 1800s and, you know, they used to have lines, you know, and then, you know, they'd fire and this line, the front line would, you know, a lot of men or women would die and then this cell would, these lines would go up and replace the front line type of a thing. It almost reminds me of kind of that analogy. If that's a poor, morbid analogy, I'm sorry, but I was trying to think of an analogy that would help us kind of understand this process. And that's kind of what happens is these are stem cells, and they differentiate into these different types of of cells as they kind of need to be replaced um, as these you know these top cells are, are you know highly uh, the, you know they're exposed to a lot of toxins and a lot of um, stress, if you will, and so they kind of need to be replaced often. And these stem cells, if the stem cell line is intact, then this process will kind of happen, and these layers of cells will kind of move up, move up, move up, move up, move up until this and this this big cycle will just continue on and on and on as long as these stem cells remain intact. So there's two concepts about stem cells that we need to understand. One is the self-renewal capacity, and the other is asymmetrical replication. So these two concepts. So they're, you know, in the case of human development or embry embryology, um, the study of how an embryo and how we're kind of all created, if you will, um, you know, a sperm and an egg kind of meet, and then we become a cell. And this cell, one cell, um, well, two cells, two, you know, the sperm and an egg combining, this one cell can become, you know, it converts into one cell becomes a trillion cells, a collection of trillion cells that make up the body, which in and of itself is an amazing um, uh, you know, mind-blowing, if you will, um, process. And in the case of this this one cell, how does this one cell turn into a trillion trillion cells? Bec and and inside the trillion cells, you have um, you have muscle, you have brain, you have liver, you have kidney. You have skin. You have all these different types of tissues, and um, how does these cells become this, 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 and this? And you know, you can break this down to all the parts of your body. You know, bone, cartilage, a fingernail, a toenail, uh, you know, hair type of a thing. So these are these are stem cells. You know, it, you know, it will divide here a couple times, and then you'll have lines of stem cell, and you'll have a stem cell. You have some kind of stem cell, and it could it can go down this pathway, or it can go down this pathway. Let's say this is a liver, and this is a brain, or it can go down this pathway. Matter of fact, it can go down any one of these pathways. So this is called this is called a stem cell. And what happens is that this stem cell population, let's just say, let me scroll down here a little bit more. Let's say this is a this is a stem cell here and it's got, you know, a couple more stem cells here. 
you know, there's just a, let's just say there's a, a group of these stem cells. Well, they need a self-renewing capability and they need asymmetrical replication. And these are kind of, they're two different concepts, but they're, they can be explained better, I think, in, a, in one concept. Is that these stem cells, you know, let's say this cell needs to be turned into a skin cell. Well, then this, then the, this one's gone, right? And then you have few left and this one turns into a brain well then this one's gone right well ha they need to maintain this pool so they will self-renew so when this one divides let's say this cell divides let's just this is an example here I'm gonna move this over here so when this cell divides this cell is this cell it's just kinda of moved exa this is an example here when this cell divides, it will go into the self renewal and it will go into one of these. So when this cell divides in half, divides and uh, undergoes mitosis, which is the process of self is uh, of duplication one part of one cell will undergo undergo self renewal which will feed back into into this population to maintain you know maintain this population and the other cell will go under under to differentiation will undergo differentiation and will turn into one of these types of tissues um, that it needs and that is self renewal capacity and asymmetrical replication. So there's huge um, uh, research projects and, and funding that's going on in this, and you know there's a uh, uh, moral dilemma, I guess. Um, you know, and I'm not gonna you know say whether it's right or wrong, or you know you can decide that for yourself. But you know, if someone, for example, if someone has a heart attack, you know, and part of their their heart is gone. Um, would it be beneficial to have these stem cell populations that can, you know, you have a stem cell here, and you know, put the stem cells, these stem cells, right by this heart, so that this heart could actually regrow itself. You know, especially in the in the examples of these these permanent um, you know, we talked about those three classifications of tissues, and the last one we talked about was the the brain, the muscles, those types of things, those cell lines that cannot reproduce anymore, or they can't, uh, you know, undergo mitosis. This whole process is called regenerative medicine, and there's a whole field of it, you know. Or if, you know, you have you have somebody here. You know, and they lose a leg, for example. You know, their their leg gets chopped off or, you know, gets crushed or something. You know, would it be advantageous to have some of these stem cells and, you know, figure out some way to kind of help grow back their leg? You know, that's it's crazy to think about, but, you know, maybe it's possible. So we'll see how this um, uh, branch of medicine, this regenerative medicine, uh, field develops over time. We'll see you in the next video.